guidance. So Dr. Jim Papa, we're so grateful to have you here today. I just want to say thank you. Well, uh, Mark, it's my, it's my pleasure and I'm, I'm looking forward to a great webinar and I'm looking forward to learning a few things from you too today. Oh, I appreciate that. And, and uh, today, Dr. Jim Papa focuses a lot of his time as uh, the chief medical officer of uh, RMI International. So uh, a place where I go to, to uh, get my own uh, regenerative medicine services done, it, it, most namely stem cells, etc. So, and uh, we're going to talk today of, of quite a bit about the topic of stem cells because that's something we get asked a lot. I get a lot of questions in regards to that. And I'm and and Dr. Jim Papa, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to be very candid with everybody. There's a lot of just bogus stuff out there. You know, a lot of misinformation, and uh, uh, I believe there's nobody better than you to shed some light in um, um, on this topic. Um, so, why do people age, and what do stem cells have to do with aging? Just let's start there, just to keep it simple. You know, um, stem cells are a whole. I mean, ten years ago, we didn't even really know about stem cells in general. We knew there was something regenerative in a certain group of cells, but we now know dramatically more. And so the whole concept here is, you know, we're all born with a fixed number of stem cells. Um, and that is some people have a few more, some people have some less. And when those stem cells are used up is when we die, when we age very quickly and we die in a very short period of time. So we now know that if we can keep the, the number and function of those stem cells uh, in a higher level, that is mitigate or take care of or re restore the lost number of stem cells. We can extend our health span. That is the amount of time we have where we're functioning more youthful. We don't get sick. And we very likely, the information is strongly suggesting we can actually live a little bit longer with a better quality of life. So stem cells are about, they're the core of our regenerative potential and basis decide how long and how well we live wow yeah and um i'm gonna quote your book uh the the book you gave me in person last time i met you in person the amount just just to set the tone yeah. for our listeners the amount of information in regenerative medicine doubles every two years we know more about regenerative medicine since 1999 than we know in the history of humanity. Did I get it right? Almost word for word, right? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the latest figures right now are the amount of information we and science and technology about aging doubles every three months. Wait, are you serious? Three months, no, which wait. means three years from now, we'll have 6,000 times more information than we have today. So that's amazing. So this is how bad quote unquote it is because last time i was with dr jim papa no. i learned this one so now as you guys see i'm learning something as well um and that's how fast this thing moves so yeah. um, there's they even talk about the escape velocity of aging right where eventually we'll beat we're, we're learning so much about the aging process where eventually perhaps we can beat that the aging process itself well, I think we're at the cusp of where we know enough now where we can dramatically slow the aging process. And what does that mean? That means if we slow it down by seven years, like in other words, we can measure now your genetic activity and what is equal to your age. So if you're 50 and we measure your genetic activity, your gene expression, it's equal to somebody who's 43, seven years less, you've decreased your chance of dying in the next seven years by 56 percent and by getting age-related diseases by 56 percent right remember i said in three years we'll have six thousand time, times the amount of information we have so if you stay healthier for another five or six years your chances of living another five or six years longer are almost assured the secret is staying healthier as long as you can because this amount of information that we have how to treat aging and its origin is is going to increase so much that you'll be able to benefit from that and stay healthier longer. And every seven or five years that you do that, you gain another five or six years. Right. There's a, I, I heard a, a little adage or an expression where, um, 
it said that we're either the last generation to die or the first one to live forever. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I don't know how much that's uh, playing God right there, but there it is. There, it seems like the scientific community is really making a push for that. Yeah, it's it's every day is an amazing day, and the amount of information we get, it's hard to keep up with. But that's why we have teams of doctors who help us do that. Absolutely. But uh, getting back to the the stem cell question, you know, we really have three types of stem cells. Uh, stem cells that are uh, the basis that form our immune system. Stem cells that are the the a certain group of cells that maintain and grow new blood vessels, and a third type our stem cells, probably one of the more important types, are the type that actually decrease inflammation and can morph into muscle, bone, cartilage, or nerve tissue. So, you, you know, if you look at it, if we're losing all three types of those stem cells as we age decade by decade, we die from either a lack of immune function because we get cancer and an infection or a virus. We die from a heart attack or stroke or poor blood supply to our organs because our blood vessels deteriorate. Or we, we die from the fact that our, the damage to our tissues can't be repaired and we lose the function of those organs. So each one of those groups of cells are essential to help us stay healthy and to avoid any one of those, those major causes of disease. So if we lose our, uh, um, our immune forming cells or hematopoietic stem cells, we have a weak um, a weak immune system, we could die from cancer, viral infections, or just a regular bacterial infection. So the secret is try to maintain all three of those stem cell types uh, as high of quality and number as possible. Let me ask you a question. Now, in regards to the process of collecting these stem cells, uh, what are the benefits of collecting stem cells? And uh, when do you do this, when you're younger versus when you're older? So yeah, this is a, 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 a real key question. So there's two main windows uh, where we have the opportunity to collect. The first and best window is just been offered to people in the last few years. Like my children were collected at their late 20s. You know, at that point in time, we collected their stem cells. They're in cryopreservation at minus 80 degrees centigrade where those cells have stopped aging. Now, my children are now in their mid 50s. I'm sorry, mid 30s, not mid 50s, mid 30s. Um, and so what's happening is those cells have an age they have, and when they hit their early 40s, they're going to start to get back their stem cells on a yearly basis so that they can maintain an immune function, a blood vessel status, and a tissue generation status that is ideal. So right. that's a new approach. People are now collecting and storing and getting back their cells earlier on in their age because they will not be accumulating the damage that happens up when they're 50 or 60 years old. So they'll actually avoid a lot of the age-related um, damage that occurs if they don't do this. The second window of opportunities for people who, and this, this is the majority, vast majority of people who are late 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, who, who say, I didn't even know about this. So, but they can still collect and store their stem cells. And those stem cells also will not be aging, okay, while they continue to. So when you hit your 50s, at least that's the latest time we should start giving back stem cells at least once a year, a couple hundred million to mitigate or restore those numbers that are being lost. Um, and if we're in our 60s, we usually get them back twice a year, 70s, maybe three times a year. But the secret is maintaining the number of those functional stem cells if you've had them stored, because here's the thing. The whole aging process, what's called the, not, the hallmarks of aging, there's nine key processes that happen that cause our stem cell, uh, cause our body cells, that cause us to age. All of those processes all come down, can be mitigated, can be addressed and improved except for one, and that is replacing the number of stem cells you have. So if you don't get them collected, there is therapies, lifestyle interventions that help quality of life, uh, but nothing to help you live longer and enhance your um, your health span. So collecting and storing those cells young, at a young age is the ideal thing, but most people didn't even know about it because it wasn't really available uh, more than five or six years ago. But today we have that opportunity to keep all of us who are 40 and up healthier, longer, and dramatically more functional. 
Absolutely. Now, wanted to ask you about uh, cellular reprogramming. So yeah. basically, you can actually turn older stem cells into younger stem cells? So yeah, this is the holy grail, if you will, of anti-aging. So let me take a step back. So right now, when we collect stem cells from anybody who's 50 or, or above, those stem cells, some of those stem cells, and firstly, most of those stem cells, their genes aren't working like they were when they were 30, but that still doesn't mean they're not very potentially a, a, a big advantage to help keep you healthy. They are, because if, you're not, if you have very few amounts of those cells, even if they're not functioning like a 30-year-old, your body can't, can't repair itself at the blood level, at the tissue level, or even the immune level. So if we can increase the numbers, you function better and you're stronger and your, your immune system's better. But imagine if we could take those 50, 60, 70 year old stem cells and turn them, make them act and actually be able to repair and regenerate your body like a 30 year old was. So going back to 2014, we started to experiment at Rutgers and how could we do this? And we found out that if we use a certain type of young cell and let them live together or culture them together in about a week, those young cells produce something magical that turned the old cells into brand new young functioning cells like they did, they were. And so from there on, we went on animal studies. We actually treated a, a small group of humans who we followed for six years who now have had extended enhanced quality, health span, um, they feel better, they look better, and that was just with one infusion. So we now know how to literally turn back the clock on stem cells. And you say, well, why? what about the rest of the body? Well, if we turn back the clock on stem cells and we give them to somebody intravenously, what happens? Well, they go to the bone marrow, which is where most stem cells uh, live, and they start making copies of 30-year-old versions of themselves, not the age of the patient. And as they make copies, more and more copies, those cells are released into the blood system. They travel through the body and they repair the blood vessels, tissues and organs, muscle, bone, cartilage, like they did when they were in their 30s. So we're able to restore and regenerate our body function at a, at a level that we did when we were literally in our peak of health. So this is now, going, and we were just, we finished all the research, we're just getting ready now to actually create this as an optional treatment for people. But keep in mind one thing, even if we didn't do that, the fact that you get, you're storing and getting back your previous collected stem cells, increasing the number of those cells, that alone has made a big difference on its own, but this will be, a quantum leap forward. Wow. I'm excited. I mean, you're talking about all this and I'm excited about this for me. Like, uh, you know, I want to be doing jujitsu when I'm, you know, 80 years old. <laughs> there you go. And there are people doing that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so what are some factors that cause those stem cells to age? So for example, senescent cells and senolytic cells, you start, sure. you start to hear more of these terms now. Um, and we've had yeah. clients us and ask us what, what do these terms mean so synolytic yeah yeah you're so you're hitting on the most important thing there's really three things that cause humanity to age quicker that we now know make a big difference and we actually have therapeutic options for each one so the first one as i mentioned was a loss of stem cell number and function so we can collect and store give those cells back the second thing is we found out in the last like seven or eight years that as we get older, some of the stem cells and body cells in our body, which are normally removed when they're damaged, when we get older, that is not efficient. And we start to collect these damaged cells. And what they do is they produce compounds, very negative inflammatory compounds that literally cause the surrounding cells to age quicker, including your stem cells. So they're called, in, in, in certain literature, you see them called zombie cells because whatever cells they touch with these um, negative compounds, they cause them to age quicker and, and die. So what's the thing is those senescent cells accumulate as we get older and older. And at the same time, our total number of stem cells decreases. So the aging process accelerates after age 40, decade by decade, quicker and quicker. 
think we had a slide of a. Uh, well, yeah, I was just going to tell you. I think we have a slide and it's ready to go up. Yeah, I can uh, explain that a little bit. Oh, it, it's ready to go up. Correct. So we'll we'll share the slide here on the screen while while you. Uh, it should be coming up right now. Uh, but while you continue explaining. Yeah. There we go. That's good. So if you take a look at this, this blue line right here, you see at age 30, you see we're at the peak of our ideal stem cell numbers. Mm -hmm. And we're also at the peak of our health cognitively, physically. Now you get into your 40s, you see that um, that blue line starts to decrease. But as we go to 50, 60 and on, it gets steeper and steeper. That's the loss of stem cells. That That's what happens to us as we age. If you look at the gray line down below, you're going to see at about the late 40s, the number of those stem cells that damage senescent cells start right. to increase, right? And where those two lines cross, okay, is when you age quickly, you start to feel really achy, painful, you, you can't physically do the things you do, and you die within a decade and a half or two. Right. So right. now see the dotted line above, the black dotted line above, if we continue to give you back your previous collected stem cells, that blue line flattens out. Right. And then the gray line, the gray dotted line, what happens is if we can remove those stem cells, senescent cells, then that line flattens out and the those lines don't meet or they don't meet for decades. But what happens is that really represents enhanced health span. And, and and lifespan. So this is these are two of the key things. Now the third thing that we found out, and I've just spent a lot of time looking into, and we're now offering this treatment, is plasma. So what is plasma? You know, 55% of our blood is this clear yellow fluid that has right. proteins in it, albumin mainly. So what happens is, let's say we're in our 30s here, and you see we have ideal amounts of stem cells and they're functioning greatly the fluid that's washing over our stem cells our body cells actually helps regulate what genes are involved in health what genes are involved in aging and it helps maintain the genes that are involved in health and function now we go to 40s it's still pretty clean then we go to the 50s 60s the fluid that bathes all of our cells gets contaminated like, um, and I think we have a slide here of a fishbowl. Maybe we can pull that up. But here's the thing is, this is very easy to understand. As we age, if you take a look at uh, here on the left hand, the young plasma is clean. Imagine those fish are our cells. Okay, so those fish are thriving because the fluid they're living in has nutrients, it's clean, there's no contaminants. Take a look at the fishbowl on the right, it's gray, it's contaminated. It ha that fluid hasn't been changed. So what happens is over time, same thing happens in our plasma. At 40s and 50s, we start to accumulate autoimmune complexes, inflammatory compounds, um, uh, viruses and bacteria live in that fluid. And all of those things change the activity of the genes that keep us healthy, moving them towards the aging uh, category of genes. So what, up until recently, we didn't know what to do about that because that's what the environment our stem cells and body cells live in. Today, in about two and a half hours, you can sit on a machine that will remove all of, virtually all of this fluid and return crystal clear saline and albumin protein. And right. what happens is people feel much less inflammation. Their brain, for instance, people who have um, long COVID syndrome, where they're at, they don't have any energy, they can't focus, their brain is foggy. One treatment like this dramatically makes people better. So this was the third step that we really now are understanding that causes us to age. It's not just the quality of the cells or number of cells, it's the environment those cells live in that will actually change the, gene, the genes involved in long-term health and, and extra lifespan. So now we can restore that as well. So those are the three main things that are involved in, in cellular aging. And although we talk about stem cells, we need to talk about one other thing. We need to talk about our genetic software. So that's the next topic. Right, right. So um, and we yeah, have a little slide down there with DNA damage. So I'm going to talk about that. And, that. Over and uh, to, to the 
DNA um, damage slide. But um, mm -hmm. so in in regards to um, to um, uh, stem cells aiding in cancer therapies and bloodborne cancers, um, like hepatopoietic yeah. stem cells, uh, they make a huge difference. Correct. Yeah, so listen, um, when we talked about the stem cells that are involved in maintaining a really strong and healthy immune system, we're talking about our hematopoietic stem cell group, okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens is NK cells or natural killer cells, which are a major component, are formed from those hematopoietic stem cells. Those cells decrease at decade by decade as well. But when we're young, we have a large amount of those cells they eat up viruses, they remove senescent cells. They actually can stop cancers from growing um, and they, they do a whole bunch of things. So by restoring our hematopoietic stem cell levels and function, this has become a whole new approach to treating cancer. Um, first of all, we're all prone to cancer throughout our lives, but because when we're young, we have that strong cell, those strong NK cells, to defend us, cancer doesn't get a chance to grow, it's destroyed. So those are the hunters for cancer. So as we age, we lose the number of those hunters, the number of those hunter killers, natural killer cells, and cancers then get a chance to start to grow. But if we have a lot of senescent cells, the compounds that those senescent cells produce allow that cancer to grow even quicker because it creates an environment for that to grow. Now we're, not, we're understanding that if our plasma is dirty, full of contaminants, that also allows cancer cells to grow quicker. But today, I'll, there's been a lot of talk about combining um, cell therapy with um, chemotherapeutic agents, with radiation, because that way there's a local, um, if you will, removal of the cancer cells, but there's a change in the environment so that that cancer or any residual cancer cells can't continue to grow. And by augmenting NK cells, then our immune system is much stronger to eat up and avoid those cells from um, spreading again. I understand. If we could go to the, the DNA slide um, yeah. that we were, we were going to talk about a, a few moments ago. Um, yeah. So how, how important is that the, the genetic component and how strong is the stem cell against that and the plasmapheresis therapy? Yeah. and so, you know, the big question is where does cellular aging begin, right? So when we look at it, it's not just what are the major reasons that we start to lose numbers and function of stem cells, uh, as well as let decreased function of our body cells, is due to a change in, I'm going to use the phrase, genetic software. So today we look at our DNA as a, as a biological or software system. And even Bill Gates had says, he has said that our DNA is the most complicated software system ever created. And so we actually understand now how to, if you will, reprogram our genetic software, our DNA. So as we age, the normal thing that happens is that those, that double-stranded helix, there's breaks in it that occur throughout our lives. And very now when we're young, those breaks can be repaired very efficiently. There's a sub-program that fixes DNA damage when we're up until our mid to late 30s. What happens then is that that genetic software program starts to malfunction due to damage to it, okay? And also the amount of free radicals and contaminants from the environment increase, so we can't keep up with the repair that's needed. So we all know what happens on our computer if we get hit with a virus, a computer virus, right? maybe there's a little glitch. If we get hit with five or six computer viruses week after week, eventually the computer crashes. So think of each one of your cells as a microcomputer. If the damage in each one of those cells gets to a certain point, that cell's going to die. Okay. If the damage in your stem cells get to a certain point, it can no longer make copies of itself, so you can't make more stem cells. And if the damage accumulates to the point where the body can't repair it, that cell can has the potential to turn into cancer. So the damage to our DNA, the break in that double strand is where the aging process begins. And it's one of the major things 
that accelerates um, the aging process. It's one of the major things that contributes to loss of function, both cognitive, physically, and decreases our lifespan. So this is, it's, it's really, um, it's an amazing, the more we understand about this, the more we realize that our bodies are truly biological machines, um, that we now have the information really to reprogram at the, at the genetic and cellular level. Right. And now let's jump a little bit into autoimmunity and immunoregulation, yeah. uh, which we spoke a little bit about cancer. But does this apply also like the MSCs uh, type cells? Um, I understand they have really good outcomes on the autoimmune side and immunoregulation. You know, if we look at the literature that's been published, we're going to see one of the most effective treatments for a number of autoimmune diseases has to do with what's called the third type of stem cell that morphs into multiple different tissues. Um, but it has, uh, this is, these are the mesenchymal or mesenchymal stem cells. Those stem cells are dramatically anti-inflammatory. They can buffer the environment and even the, the dirty plasma, so to speak, that our cells are being exposed to. So they reverse the inflammation levels inside cells. They also help to regulate how a cell functions. So what happens is if we can drop inflammation dramatically, what happens to our immune system, sometimes it will automatically reset itself so that, for instance, if you have fibromyalgia or uh, Raynaud syndrome or some of these other kind of common autoimmune symptoms, you'll notice that the disease process is gone because by dropping the inflammation, the genetic software has reset itself. Um, so mesenchymal stem cells, we call them MSCs, have been very successful in multiple types of autoimmune diseases if they're given in large enough numbers and maybe more than once. So that has been like rheumatoid arthritis is a big thing that MSCs help. So, so we're really starting to understand that the immune system, okay, which is formed from that first type of stem cell, the hematopoietic stem cells, that, um, as well as our intestines, where a lot of the IgG, IgM, and IgA factors are formed from inside our intestines, those two things can be regulated by um, this third type of stem cell, the, hematopo the mesenchymal stem cells, by, by keeping inflammation levels lower and without allowing them to peak. That's awesome. I'm I'm going to sneak a question in here uh, that sure. I just. Um, so what what's your thoughts on because when you when you hear about the stem cells and the plasmapheresis and so forth. It's almost like, hey, I can eat whatever I want. I don't have to have a healthy lifestyle. Do you think all this mitigates lifestyle? Because I've I've heard a few people. No, I'm doing my stem cells. I'm good. I <laughs> it's like, wait, hold on, buddy. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think my thoughts are the same as you because we've talked about this. One of the most important things is your lifestyle. So let me give you an idea. Um, we have 100 trillion cells that make up the human body. Each one of those cells has six feet of DNA in it. So if you multiply 100 trillion times six, you can go to the moon and back again if we were to unwind the DNA about six times. That's a lot of DNA. Yeah. So what impacts that DNA most is not your inheritance. You inherit maybe 30% of your future health. The other 70% is dictated by your environment, how you, where you live, your lifestyle. Do you exercise? Do you eat food? Do you keep your blood sugar level regular? Do you eat the right types of food? How much stress is in your life? Okay. All of those things have a major impact on how much DNA damage you suffer, what genes get active or not active. So the good news and the bad news is this. The good news is 70% of your future health, you are the captain of your ship. The bad news is you are the captain of your ship and you're responsible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked you that question. You know, that's a huge passion of mine, lifestyle management. That's what we do here at Biohacks. And, Absolutely. You know, help manage you know people's sugars and we're big on micronutrients and you know right. helping stop inflammation autoimmunity and uh d deep level testing extremely deep testing uh to help people live a healthy lifestyle and sometimes i will hear people say you know well 
I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing my stem cells and so forth. And, and where I, I'd, I'd love to people to understand, especially coming from you where, no, you still need to pay attention to your lifestyle. And, and for example, your, your, your book talks about uh, bioidentical hormones and, and other key factors. Do you still think it plays a role of uh, all these therapies together? Yes. Yeah, so in, for instance, at the Regenerative Medicine Institute, which is housed in San Jose, Costa Rica, and we could talk about why in a minute, um, we look at, when we do something similar to what you're doing, we do, we look at how you're aging at the physical level. Okay, your body composition, your muscle mass, your fat mass, your BMI. We look at, and other things. We look at how you're aging at the cellular level. So we can take a look at how many stem cells we've been able to collect, how viable they are, what your immune function is, and a number of other cellular markers. We then take another step lower and we go into um, your molecular markers. And here's where hormones. We all know about a men, uh, we all know about menopause for women, okay. Yep. But men go through a very sim similar thing where their testosterone drops, they lose um, their enthusiasm for life, their body changes. Restoring hormonal levels, uh, and this doesn't have to be drastic, but restoring hormonal levels can make a tremendous improvement in body composition, mind state, but also by improving body composition, we're extending your health and your functional abilities. We take another step deeper and we take a look at your genetic uh, profile. We look at DNA damage. How, how much damage are you, do you have? We look at free radical levels and we look at some other genetic predispositions. For instance, what's your predisposition to diabetes, heart attacks or whatever, that's your 30% inheritance. So we recommend lifestyle changes to buffer because you have 70% control over that. And the right. last thing we look at now is epigenetic changes. That is what genes are active and not active. So today with a simple home test kit, we can look at 900,000 900, points on your personal genetic software, your genome, and edit out the key genes that we know are involved in youth and health and aging and disease, and actually start to be able to flip those switches on the gene on those genes to a more, um, I, I'm going to say, functional and youthful profile. And most of these tests are home test kits now. You don't even have to go to the doctor's office to fit right. a lot of these. Not all, but a lot of these. So today we get a composite look at how you're aging from the macro to the micro level. And this all creates a personalized program, which is exactly what you've been talking about. Right, right. And um, let, let's talk a little bit about injuries, musculoskeletal injuries. Sure. Um, and uh, because this one, I, I do hear people uh, asking me a lot about stem cells and so forth. And uh, um, the, is it the hematopoietic stem cells, the MSCs? Which ones are the ones that help with uh, the injuries? So, so most of the people that we see, we all end up as we get older, by the way, muscular skeletal things have to do with joints, muscles, ligaments, tendons. So the mesenchymal stem cells are the key ones that if we have very few of those left, doesn't matter what else you're doing, exercising or whatever you're eating, you have to have mesenchymal stem cells to build. They morph into muscle, bone, cartilage, okay? And so the key thing here is to have the right amount of those cells and have functional components of those cells. Uh, in other words, those cells are secreting the compounds that will create more muscle, bone, and cartilage. Um, hematopoietic stem cells are also a, an important component of injuries like that in our athletes, in our mixed martial arts people, in our um, soldiers and military people, because without the blood flow, the right amount of blood flow to an era damaged injury, injury, the mesenchymal stem cells can't get in there to do their job, and the body can't flush out the, the damaged tissues and, and things that the damaged tissues make. So those two, um, I mean, endothelial progenitor cells are the ones that grow the blood vessels. Those two endothelials and mesenchymal stem cells are essential, essential for wound healing. And today, um, and one of the things that you have been done, done a great job on is the use of peptides and not just hormones. So we now, peptides, what are they? They're actually biologic, they're part of the, if you will, genetic software toolbox. 
yeah. peptides are amino acids that can turn on different regions of the DNA inside the cell so the cell heals quicker. Absolutely. The ligaments and tendons work better. Muscle cells grow back more quickly. And that in combination with the right amount of hormones is the secret to really, really being able to heal musculoskeletal injuries. Um, like I said, our athlete, our football players, our basketball players, soccer players, uh, martial artists, uh, even you, the, the guys like all of us who like to be athletic on the weekends. Um, and the secret here is joints. So one of the most common injuries that happens to all of us is we wear down our joints, our knees and our shoulders. Today, when we, we transplant the mesenchymal stem cells under ultrasound guidance, we can do that without even you being asleep with a little local anesthesia. We can literally place those cells within a millimeter of where they need to be. And they can literally stop the inflammation in the joint and in certain instances, even regrow some of the cartilage. And in most instances, restore the tendons and ligaments and even help restore the muscle. So when we combine that with an intravenous infusion of mesenchymal stem cells, we get the best results. And unfortunately, in the U.S., we can't do intravenous mesenchymal stem cells. So that's one of the reasons why we moved to Costa Rica, where we can legally accomplish, I think, a more effective treatment without surgery and avoid surgery or delay the, the need for surgery for years to come. Can you develop the, on that a little bit? Because, um, I, and I think it's almost an obligation for us to discuss this a little. Uh, we've, uh, uh, both of us have spent, and you more than myself, uh, a lot of time with uh, attorneys and so forth to understand the, the, the regenerative space and the legal implications in the US. Sure. And um, perhaps you can, develop a little bit on that for us and understand why, you know, maybe go, go overseas to, to see, to see you versus doing stem cells here in the U S and why you, the quality would be different and so forth. Right. So here in the U S um, you can, you can collect and store your own stem cells, but uh, two gen two administrations previous have now made our stem cells drugs. So although you could collect and store them, you can't use them, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense, correct? So there's hundreds of thousands of people who've done this, but now can't use their cells. And the reason why that is, is because there's been a lot of misconceptions about your own cells. Um, think of it, why can't we use our own cells, but we can get a blood transfusion, which are our own cells. So what our stem cells are really a, comp a small component that naturally occurs in your blood, but we can't use that component. Now, none of this makes a lot of sense because there's a very misconstrued idea about what stem cells do. We're not talking about babies or fetal stem cells. We're talking about adult stem cells that are illegal. You can you can get a white blood cell transfusion if you're if your your immune system's low before surgery. You get a red blood cell transfusion if you're anemic you can get a plasma transfusion if certain factors are, but you can get all three of those components but you can't get the isolated component of any of those things and none of that makes sense now part of that is due to the mindset in a, a big pharma the mindset of if you will insurance companies who are committed to the present model of medicine, which treats the symptoms of disease, not the origin of diseases. And by making that giant paradigm step from treating symptoms to origin, which is our stem cells and DNA, what happens is a lot of these major industries, monster industries, become unnecessary. A portion of that impacts the need for drugs. And so there's a there's a lobbyist, a lobby component saying, well, let's slow it down. Let's not let it get approved too quickly. Um, and frankly, other other countries are taking a more progressive attitude towards looking at the present research that shows many of these treatments are very effective and they're safe. But, you know, maybe it'll be another decade or two in the U.S., maybe longer, maybe not. But. I wouldn't count on seeing what we what we 
what has been approved in countries like Costa Rica or for instance in Korea or other countries where stem cells are now being allowed for specific treatments where you'd have to take a drug on a regular basis. So it has to do with that, but it also has to do with um, the mindset of the medical community globally. And we're all fixated on at the moment with this antiquated medical system that says, well, you take a medication because you have this symptom. This isn't about that. This is about avoiding the symptom, turning the genes off, and create the symptom or using peptides that can actually help change, again, the, the genetic software and re-regulate certain genes that were optimal and, and turn off genes that are negative. We have natural DNA com repair compounds that can make, in three weeks, drop DNA damage rates dramatically, drop inflammation dramatically. We have other medications that can remove senescent cells. Right. We have uh, all of these things. So they're all now available as part of the treatment components. Yeah, I, I mean, and these are things that we're saying. Uh, um, I think we're personally, forgive me for applying intent to to you right now, Dr. Jim Pop, but I think we're both obsessed with this to the the this topic. And yeah. I myself, uh, right now, I, I mean, this morning I took uh, my shot of MOTC, which is an amazing peptide yeah. for longevity. Yep. And we were just talking before the webinar started on some other peptides. And um, these are things that we we really believe in. And, you know, having gone to medical school as well, um, and I, I graduated medical school in 2015, so not that long ago, um, we're still following this model of toxin to treat toxicity, you know, and where it makes no sense in my head, you know. Um, so... We, we spoke about a, a lot about resetting and regeneration. How about organ regeneration? What's your thoughts on that? And have you done any yeah. work? So, so organ regeneration. So the basis of what that consists of is, for instance, let's say, take a look at somebody who's 60 years old. Mm -hmm. They've lost probably 30, 40% function of their liver. Their cardiac function because they don't, they haven't been able to have the right amount of mesenchymal stem cells to make more cardiac muscle. That's true. Their cardiac output's down. They're immune. So the, these are what we call cardiovascular systems. Uh, we 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 recognize we have that. We have a musculoskeletal system. So we lose muscle mass and bone density. A lot of this is a large part. Practically the majority of loss of organ function. Um, has to do with the loss of stem cell function and the right things to regulate the genes, whether they're peptides or hormones or a combination. So how do we regenerate our organs in vivo or inside our body is we want to move towards the ability to, to not only increase our stem cells, the numbers, but to make those stem cells work like they were when they were in their 30s. And this is where we get into stem cell reprogramming. Um, now, and we can take 80-year-old stem cells, bring them back to 30-year-old function, put them back in the body where they multiply, and then they can literally, literally start to repair and restore our failing organs at a much more quicker and efficient rate than if we used older stem cells, which will do the job, but not quite as efficiently. Now, we also are taking, for instance, um, a cadaver heart. And we take somebody who's died, we take the heart, we can remove all the muscle and you're ending up what looks like a white stringy skeleton. Now we've in the lab, we've already taken that particular model, put it in a fluid and dripped, for instance, a person's stem cells onto that. And in two to three weeks, miraculously, those stem cells create a new heart that can be transplanted back into a person and have no rejection. Now we've done that in dogs, rabbits. We've done it with livers, with bladders, with tracheas, with ears. And so where are we moving now is, I think the the whole idea of organ replacement uh, and trying to find donors in the next decade will be completely gone. You'll be able to regrow your own organ. And more, even more excitingly, you may not even have to have it done in the lab we may be able to regrow it in your body while it's still there. And that's already underway. So what's the secret right now is 
stay healthy as you can for the next seven years, 10 years, and take advantage of what's going to be available with this rapid increase in science and technology and, and you know, what we can do to restore organ function. Oh. If you don't get your stem cells collected now, um, you're going to miss a shot at having being able to use this technology when it comes up in the next seven to ten years. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the main caveat with all this. Yep. You have a bit of a uh, ticking clock running against you as you're running out of these stem cells, right? So, um, kind of starting to wrap up here on, um, you know, I I'd love for us to touch touch base on just intracellular therapy overall, you know, the ability to everything we can do, you know, just uh, if we, if we were to give say a perfect, perfect recipe for somebody that's out there and, and uh, uh, really getting into the regenerative medicine space and, right. and committing to, to, you know what, I'm 40 years old, but I want to, I want to get to a hundred years old and feel great. What, 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 what would they do? I mean, what, um, change their diet, just do stem cells. I mean, what, what would you say that we can do nowadays uh, from an intracellular therapy level? So an intracellular therapy point of view, you want to combine conservative but noticeable changes in lifestyle, exercise, diet, stress reduction. It, those all change your genetic software to a more ideal thing. Then you want to be able to add to that things like peptides, things like DNA repair compounds, uh, medications that keep your blood sugar regulated, um, things that augment their sirtuin pathways, which we know if we increase sirtuin act gene activity, you live longer. That's what calorie restriction does that. But a certain right. other supplements to do that, fisetin, quercetin, terastilbene, resveratrol are all things that help with uh, particularly NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, nicotinamide riboside, all help switch the right gene patterns. Um, but you also can look at things, for instance, that are help with basic cellular nutrition. Your body needs, without a question, the right uh, um, vitamins, minerals, cofactors, but also you need to regulate your GI tract, the right probiotics, prebiotics, to keep your immune system strong and your ability to digest the foods you eat, your proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And our, our GI tract all ages very quickly as well. So these are ways to change that genetic software, intracellular therapies um, that make a big, big difference. And the secret is being able to measure where you're deficient in those things and being able to then make a change in your personal therapy and then follow up with another test to see that you've made it better. And we have all that technology and science available. Oh, absolutely. Uh, what gets measured? is i can't say always gets improved but <laughs> that, that's the pathway for for us to improve right and um you know and adding on some of these uh, other things like your bioidentical hormones and peptides and so forth yeah. um, to help potential you know Close. somebody at one point or another gave an example to me and i stuck with this and this person might have been you so if i am quoting you let me know when i'm done <laughs> but um you know there's the example of the piano and the pianist right just because all the keys are on the piano doesn't mean you have to the pianist has to play all those keys right he picks exactly. what he's going to activate and that's kind of almost the summary of a lot of what we said here today and Absolutely. um so i i don't remember who i I got this from if I got it from you. Uh, no, I don't think you did. I had another analogy, but I think that's a really good one. Yeah. So be your own pianist and you you understand the risks that are around you. And I'm going to there's one more point I just remembered here um, that I'm going to wrap probably wrap up with this one, Dr. Jim Papa. And this one's one that um, we see a lot in uh, as an objection. So many times. Uh, we'll have clients that will come with their, uh, sometimes even with their their concierge doctors, or you know, they're they'll speak to their primary, and and this the the all of a sudden they're shutting down this whole thing, and you know, every a lot of what we spoke about, if not everything, and, and you know, say there's not there you, they can't find any non for profit research on this, um, but if you go to Google Scholar, for example. Uh, there's a lot of research on peptides and bioidentical hormones and how, yep. how is the research landscape on, on stem cells, plasmapheresis, all these different therapies we're talking about. And what's your standpoint on that? 
Well, we, we just did a summary. We have over 3,000 pages of publications on stem cells for multiple conditions that are in phase two, three studies, four studies. You know, it takes a long time to get the approval for what is considered an FDA approved process and the tremendous amount of money it takes to do that. I think that's the real issue, but um, there's no question there's the proof is there that this is the where medicine's going to go. It's just a matter of how quickly it happens. Um, and I think that any doctor who starts to look at the, the recent literature will see more and more proof that what we're talking about, all these topics today, have real credibility in creating a whole new model for medicine in the future. We're just here a little early, Mark. <laughs> so, and and one thing I I I like to uh, put out there when when we have these kind of obje objections, you know, I almost feel like a Galileo when I when what I'm going to say right now, I'm advocating for. An, a renaissance in medicine yeah you know, the, the, we're, we're seeing the world as square still yep it's i agree round. it's round you know yeah. we're we're not treating the body holistically the body's all compartmentalized then you go to the specialist of the specialist that pretty much pretty much at one point he's specialized in nothing so specialized <laughs> and 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 the whole point with 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 the things we're talking about these are things that are inside our body already um that it, it it's easier to understand conceptually wait the vitamin d and the bioidentical hormone and the peptide and the stem cell and and so on and so forth these things are in us already and they're lots of times uh out of balance versus putting in a completely new molecule a medication that's maybe 20 30 40 years old that right. has not been inside the human body for years so that's just just a thought that sometimes i it 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 it, it baffles me that it's hard to understand that what the things we're talking about they're although high tech but they're uh more natural than what we have now it's about having the body be able to repair and restore itself using its own cells and its own potential that's and that is directly contrary to what the present model of medicine is, but we will get through to them. <laughs> God willing, God willing. Dr. Jim Papa, it's been an absolute pleasure and blessing to have you here today. Um, always let's a wealth. Let's get this in again and, and uh, see if we can give people even more information based on whatever questions you get. Yeah, and uh, I think we can come in with some case studies and so forth sure. in the future. And, and uh, uh, but again, always a pleasure to, to have you and. Uh, just for Mike. everybody out there, you know, Dr. Jim Pop and I, we are friends. We uh, we do uh, we do collaborate collaborate a lot with each other, and this is something, you know, not where two speakers decided to get together because we're in the same industry, but I uh, there's there's a strong connection between the two of us, and you know, we're coming with whole hearts today to to give our best to to help you guys to be bigger, better, faster, stronger for a really long time. You're absolutely right, and I look forward to continuing on the same path with you it's a lonely journey but it's nice to have a brother along the same path yes sir yes sir thank you for your mentorship and guys anybody out there if you guys have any questions uh just send us in uh an email to it should be on the screen info at biohacks.com uh or give us a call at 786-689-5948 any questions you may have in regards to stem cells and so forth we'll forward it to rmi international and you guys will get in touch with Dr. Giampapa or questions that for things we could do here in the US, yeah. our biohacks team will take care of you guys as well. All right. Have a great day and make sure you hit that gym in the morning. I will. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, you know it. You know it. <laughs> Put these stem cells to work. <laughs> you got it, buddy. Have a great day. Thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. Dr. Giampapa. Bye.